Thursday and Friday of this past week, where I had substantial meetings with the presidents of Honduras and El Salvador, our good friends, and also the foreign ministers, and they both reiterated very strongly their support and gratitude for and enthusiasm for your initiative and for the peace plan. That's, uh, they could not be more warmly and sincerely enthusiastic in back of those, that peace plan than they are, um, including, of course, the support for $14 million. Now, President Monet, Costa Rica, has just left the box. He's going to be going out, and he's going to be out on the top. Well, they personally affirm the, their support in just the strongest terms. Capturing him is quite a coup, Mr. President. President of Argentina. It's those people who have been skeptical about our policies who, when they support it, carry so much weight on the hill. Something that we would like to achieve, particularly in regards to Nicaragua, we ought to use a formula that we would be prepared to live with also in the case of Afghanistan. Because I think it's very important not to set a standard for ourselves in Nicaragua, which the Soviets would then turn and use against us in Afghanistan. And therefore, something which stresses self-determination internally with external neutrality and respect for the interests of all neighbors, including the major power nearby, is the right formula. Because that implies that if even the Marxist-Leninists were to win a free election in Nicaragua, we would accept it, provided they respect the interests of all of their neighbors that are neutral. Because that formula can then be used in the case of Afghanistan to mean that if a non-communist regime comes to power in Afghanistan, provided it is neutral, provided it is firmly neutralized, the Soviets should be prepared to live with it. 
I think we run a risk that we set too high a standard for Nicaragua. The Soviets can then turn it and use that against us in Afghanistan. Of course, we also have to make sure that any election, while they are still in power, must not be like that last one. That That's must right. be open to some kind of international supervision. That's right. I think here, the supervision of the elections in El Salvador is a good example. And here also, the Contadora guarantee gives us the basis of saying to the Soviets that we would be prepared to work something out like that for Afghanistan. For example, an arrangement whereby even after the Soviet troops have left, there is in Afghanistan in place a peacekeeping force from Islamic countries which the Soviets do not view as unfriendly. I have in mind, for example, Algeria, Syria, God forbid, maybe even Libya. The point being they're Islamic, but the Soviets would have gone, and yet to the Soviets, it would be a source of reassurance, just as Colombia, Mexico, Panama, and so forth, are reassurance to us regarding Nicaragua. This way. recognize our visitors here this morning. I've I've been pleased to confer with these distinguished Americans and they agree with me that if any area of the world is of vital interest to the United States it is neighboring countries in Central America. Former Secretary of State Kissinger also has asked me to express his continuing support for our Central American policy. Our April 4th proposal, asking for both sides to lay down their arms and enter a church-mediated dialogue for peace, offers new hope to the region. It could open the path to conciliation. Our plan has been endorsed by Nicaragua's neighbors. President Duarte, Suazo, and Monet have all sent letters of strong support. Other Latin American nations view it as a positive step. El Salvador's President Duarte called it the right step at the right time and urged members of Congress to support it. I'm asking Congress to give this peace initiative and democracy a chance. I'm asking Congress to work with me to stem the flood of refugees, the threat of hostile forces on our borders, and the loss of faith in America's commitments around the world that could definitely result if we do not act quickly and responsibly. I'm asking Congress to join me in the bipartisan spirit so essential to our security in providing this small amount, $14 million, for the more than 15,000 Nicaraguans who are struggling for democracy. It is so little, yet such an important symbol of our resolve, a signal to all of Central America, and yes, to those everywhere in the world who depend on us. Our overall policy in the region has been working, but continued success depends on Congress' prompt release of aid for the Nicaraguan democratic resistance. Democracy and peace deserve a chance. The freedom-loving people of Nicaragua deserve a chance. To accomplish this and protect our country, we must stand together. These distinguished Americans know in a very personal way how crucial bipartisan unity is to a successful American foreign policy. End of statement. Mr. President, how does the vote look now? I have this photo opportunity. I'm not going to take any questions except to say that, that one, uh, I haven't had a, a count on that. Having just returned. Are you confident? Mm -hmm. I'm always cautiously optimistic. I thank all of you for coming to the idea, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you. you. Well, we just figured some figure this stuff out after a while. <laughs> that's it, that's the spot. The spot's on you. Yeah. The president's every time he's a little bit of a feeling, he's
problems that we're having in this country, they're going across the country, documentation, and help keep their families safe and secure. Earlier this month, we formed a national partnership for child safety. And now I'd like to ask all of you boys, and I've jotted down a few things here in a card that we'd like to ask you to do, to tell you what to do and how you learn, and know your full address and your home phone number. Important. Listen carefully to all the special safety tips that your parents and your teachers, I think you will see that on these wonderful people here who are willing to give up their talent too much time away from all the beauty and the glamour is here, but just to add my thanks to all of you here in the show, to all of you for being here. Thank you. God bless you all. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, we, we have all discussed this before, and I think we have a pretty good idea of the overall plan and the compromises that were reached. We have said that this is going to probably be the legislative battle of all time because we're trying to change 20 or 25 years of history, hundreds of programs. And so it seemed to us that we need two things. One is a marketing kit to tell us uh, what we're doing. This little gray book. And then second, uh, a legislative strategy to get this through. Uh, we're going to be meeting with Bob Dole and Domenici this afternoon and other members of the Senate leadership <laughs> to get a clearer fix on the legislative strategy in terms of where the soft spots are, where the work needs to be done. And as soon as we get a firm reading on that, we'll be back to various uh, departments and agencies here asking you to see certain people that we've identified to sell them uh, further uh, on some of the individual components of this plan. I think we all recognize that this is a very fragile thing. 52 billion the first year, nearly 300 billion over three years, 